how to be fully present. Can you hear that? Look around the room where you are, or if you're outside. Maybe you can hear the traffic. I'm in my garden, there's a road there. What are you sensing in your body right now? Can you feel any kind of tingling, aliveness? What about the sound of my voice? What about the sound of the room where you're in? Is there a clock? The hum of a fridge? Or an AC unit? Someone's drilling here. <laughs> are any of these things thoughts? Thoughts are always about past and future, right? Even if you have a thought about now, by the time you've thought of it, that now is in the past. <laughs> Not that now can ever be in the past, because, because the past is a thought. And the future is a thought. But anything that's happening in the sensory space, anything that you're aware of aside from thoughts, your sense perceptions, that's happening now. It's in the now, in the present. And I used to spend ages thinking, how do I be fully present? How do I be fully present? How do I do this presence thing? Because we're so conditioned to think that we do everything via thought. <clears throat> to be fully present isn't a thought. It's a movement of attention. From thought to sense perceptions. That's one way. That's one pointer. It's not the entire truth of the situation, but that can certainly help people, especially me a few years ago, move into presence from thought about past or future onto sense perceptions, the things that are happening in the now, the life that you have in front of you. And then there's a deeper level, being aware of your own awareness. You have everything you're aware of what is known and then you have the knower of experience the awareness of what arises within awareness <laughs> and that knower can know itself yet it knows itself that awareness can be aware of itself. <laughs> so, presence naturally arises when awareness is aware of itself. have awareness and then you have what arises within awareness <laughs> it's really that simple you're just here 
You're just here. It doesn't take any effort. It's the cessation of effort. It's a lot of effort to be thinking all the time. And I'm not demonizing thinking. I'm not saying that all thinking is terrible. But most of it is negative and repetitive. There's planning. There's conceptualization for useful reasons. And then there's the useless thoughts that spin round and round in most of our heads. The neuroticisms. The story of I. The small me. What's going on in my life? How many people have wronged me? How inconvenient things are for me? And then there's here and now in the presence. <laughs> the sensory field. The awareness. And it's still here. It's peaceful. Even if there's noisy, hectic things going on in the life situation, perhaps. I could, you know, be sitting here now in a nice, peaceful garden. Or I could be somewhere where things are really kicking off. Perhaps the protests that are going on in America right now. Perhaps in one of those cities. Even so, there's a stillness that underlies the experience, no matter how seemingly intense that experience is, no matter how much movement there is within what is known. The knower is always still. There's an awareness that underlies what you're aware of, which is undisturbed, undisturbed by anything that appears within awareness. So establish yourself as the awareness and it's the source of your peace and happiness. <laughs> peace.